Hi there guys, it's Mike from MCQ Bushcraft here and welcome to episode 12 of Bushcraft Basics. In last week's episode we had a look at knives and we specifically focused on bushcraft knives. We did touch on other grinds that you may find out there, the types of metals that you can find, but specifically we looked at bushcraft knives and a bushcraft knife in this day and age is often something that you see with a Scandinavian grind and looks quite traditional. That knife has its pros and cons and we did discuss those last week in some detail. A very good knife or good grind for working with wood but something with a secondary bevel is generally a lot more better suited as an all-round knife. But let's talk about some of the ways in which a knife can be held. So I have a basic bushcraft knife in front of me here and we talked about this knife in some detail last week in our previous episode. But I've just taken this knife out of my sheath and obviously when I take it out of my sheath, most of the time I'm holding the knife like this. And this is called the foregrip hold. It's sometimes called the shake hands grip, but often commonly referred to as the foregrip hold, where you're holding the knife like this, the blade pretty straight on when you hold your arm out. And um, this is quite a powerful method of cutting. It allows you to put a great deal of force down. It sometimes allows you to lock your shoulder and apply a great deal of force like this if you don't want to fatigue your arm too much and you want to lock these muscles together and use body weight to actually make the cut. But it's a fairly efficient way of holding a knife and a very common way of holding a knife. We can reverse the knife as well. So the actual finger groove goes just here where our thumb is and we reverse the knife like this so the blade is facing us and that's called the reverse foregrip and that again is a very very good way of holding a knife if you wish to cut towards yourself but it requires a lot more skill because obviously the blade is now pointing towards you. The key to using this method is to make sure your elbow is tucked into your side here and you'll just be using your wrist like this and it often requires you to put a lot of pressure into the item you're cutting. We take this piece of wood for example like that but it allows you to make very powerful cuts and I can really pull as hard as I want on the knife and because my elbow is tucked into my stomach there it will break for me and it won't allow the knife to come any further so even if I put down a huge amount of pressure you'll see the knife just can't come back, it stops there. A lot of the pressure is in the wrist really and pushing against the piece of wood. I'm not just pulling back like this, recoiling quite violently. I'm using my wrist to guide the cut. And methods like that can be very useful if you're carving something where you need to carve this way because of the wood grain, for example, and you need to hold it on the end and there's not much to hold on to. So you're not gonna hold it like this, for example, which would be quite dangerous and there'd be very little control, you can hold it there and achieve the same thing with more accuracy by bringing the knife towards you just like that. And that's quite a, a good cutting technique. But there are other methods as well. We obviously talked about this method here, which we'll go over in a second. But there may be methods that you wish to use. I mean, the most common way in which I use a knife, and it always comes back to the knife handle for me, which is why I like this curve, just here on a lot of the knives that I use is because I like using the chest lever and it's probably 80 to 85 percent of the way in which I use a knife and that's where instead of reversing the knife towards you like this you turn it like that you put your thumb on the back of the blade and you bring everything nice and tucked in like this and this is a very powerful way of cutting There are other ways of holding a knife by locking the knife into the knee. You can feather wood this way and you can also strip the bark off sticks very easily by not moving the knife at all, just literally adjusting the angle of the blade depending on how it feels. But it's a very safe way of using the knife and a clean way of using it to achieve a task that's actually pretty simple and can be made very complicated by using a different technique. So if we look at the environment I'm in, I'm in the woods, I'm on my own. I might be out here just camping on my own or I might just be here for the day, practicing some skills, going for a walk and soaking in nature just to get away from it all. 
but the key point is I'm on my own. And obviously when you're on your own, it can be quite dangerous if you're not experienced with tools and you're using them the wrong way. Things can go wrong. If I get my knife out here and I'm holding it like this, and let's say it's been raining and there are some exposed roots on the ground, they can be quite slippy. There might even be small holes that animals have made and I can't see them because they're covered over by debris or leaf litter. Let's say I want to go pick up a piece of wood over there and I start walking over there with my knife out the sheath holding it. It's actually quite a dangerous thing to do and uh, I would never walk around too freely with my knife out like this simply because if I trip over or I have a fall no matter how good I think I am or how controlled I think I'm going to be if I have an accident Accidents happen when you least expect them to, and you don't really have a lot of control. It's not like you envisage them to be whatsoever. You can fall down, and you might land on your blade, and that's a four inch blade. That's a hell of a depth to go into your body, depending on the angle it goes in, for example, and where it goes in. But that would be pretty much fatal for me, and if I was out here on my own, it doesn't matter whether I'm one mile from civilization or ten. I'm probably not going to make it back if this knife goes straight in there and um, you know, punch is something pretty serious. So rule number one is you never walk with your knife out just freely walking around. No matter how safe you think you are, things can catch you out. So before I go pick up that piece of wood, knife goes back in the sheath and now I can go get it. Whether I'm in a group or I'm on my own, the knife goes in the sheath when I move around and the same rules apply because obviously I don't want to fall on somebody else and have the knife in my hand because it could be pretty damaging for them. But I've got the piece of wood now and I'm standing up. I'm here on my own, I take my knife out, I start working. You can see immediately I've adjusted the way in which I'm holding this piece of wood. I was holding it like that and then suddenly I've put my hand like this and I've locked the piece of wood into my forearm to make it one piece by locking the piece of wood against my hand it eliminates the movement in the actual object I'm carving with or sharpening and if I'm using this method the foregrip method to actually take some wood off the end there for whatever reason I'm doing it for there's very little movement in this piece of wood and if I just tuck it under my stomach there I can carve quite firmly with the piece of wood and there's very, very little movement. So you can see it's quite a powerful way of, of using your body and the knife correctly to be able to take off a large portion of wood. But you don't necessarily need to take off lots of wood. When you're carving, you can just let the knife do the work. Let the grind, let that Scandinavian grind or whichever grind you're using, bite in and do the work for you. It's not about how strong you are really, sometimes with knives, it's really just about technique and the strength develops with it and you don't really notice it and it's, they start naturally gelling together to create better knife use overall. But if I was in a group and I'm cutting like this for example, let's say there's somebody there and I put down a lot of power and do this and follow through with my, with my arm there and with my swing. Again, this is something just to be mindful of. If you are out with your friends, which is a lot of what you do in bushcraft, you go out in groups and you experience this sort of thing together, he might be moving towards me to come and see what I'm doing, or she, and I might be like this, and I might catch him in the hand, or her in the hand or something. So it's good just to be mindful of who's around you. That's more of a group setting, but on your own, obviously, you don't have that kind of problem. But I'm standing up and I can incorporate other techniques. Standing up is a very safe way of working. Um, you're far away from your legs, which are quite vital areas. You have some pretty major arteries in there, which we'll talk about later. And if you're sitting down and working, you really want to adjust your techniques. But I can use the chest lever as well. If I want to put a point on this. A very, very powerful way of using a knife. No problems there, I'm not going to have any safety issues. If I tilt it like that and I start being a bit sort of strange with it, you know, that could be dodgy because I'm whipping the knife across my face, but you just keep it pointing out in front of you. Just make sure your hands are far enough away and that you're going at a slow enough pace so you're not, you know, I see some people using knives and they're, you know, they're going mad with it. 
trying to hack away at the piece of wood, you know, almost demonic like. You don't really need to carve that way, it's not about how quickly or how hard you're doing it. What will happen is, and I've seen it before, is someone come back and take the tip of their thumb off with the nail attached, all gone, in an instant. And um, you know, they're just going too quick and putting too much power into it. So just go slow and just focus on concentrating that power if you wish to use it in the actual cut itself rather than coming back and going super quick. If we're sitting down and we want to do some carving, for example, let's say we're making a trap and we need to sharpen some stakes. There's a particular area of the body you really want to be careful with and that's the inner leg. Uh, a lot of accidents can happen in the inner leg and they can be really serious when they do occur. And it often goes back to a sharp knife is a safe knife, the way I'm concerned. I see a lot of guys when I'm out on courses with pieces of wood working near their inner leg and their knife might be a little bit dull. And they put down an enormous amount of pressure on the piece of wood because the knife is slightly dull. And then the grain goes and the knife can go through the inner leg if you're not careful. You have some major arteries running up your inner leg, your femoral arteries, and it doesn't take an awful lot to get to them. Um, you know, if you nip the blade in too deep, you really could potentially hit one of those arteries. And if you're out in the woods on your own, you're dead. It's as simple as that. It doesn't matter how good of a first aider you are. If you hit your femoral artery, you're probably gonna die. You know, there's, there's a 99% chance you're gonna die. If you're out there with friends, and I suggest you better hope that they're good enough to, to put enough pressure on it and react quickly enough to help you out. But if you're out exploring the wilderness and you're in very remote areas, the chances are that you're going to run into troubles and that'll be your, your last trip. So you really have to be careful when working sitting down if you want to sit there with your legs apart. And uh, what I generally say is if you do want to sit like this, just put your elbows on your knees and carve like that. I don't really find that very comfortable. In fact, I find it very awkward. So tends to, I tend to work to the side of myself. You can do the same with an ax as well. Just work to the side of yourself slightly and work like this. And it allows you then to make this piece of wood an extension of your forearm, tuck it into the stomach to reduce any recoil and just carve away quite happily. Obviously, if you're using techniques like this, you know, there's not so much of a problem with the leg at all. There's no issue whatsoever if you're using the chest lever then no issues with the inner leg at all in fact those are very very safe ways of using a knife this way is very safe too the foregrip like that if you hit your outer leg the muscle with the blade then it's not as bad at all and you're going to live to see another day quite easily incomparable to if you go into the inner leg with the knife so if you're sitting down just don't work within your inner leg the same with battening as well. Uh, battening's another one. People get a bit too comfortable. They straddle the piece of wood that they're battening. They batten down like this. And a lot of people don't realise it, but you don't actually have as much control as you think you do when you're battening. The grain can go, you can whack it down, suddenly your arm goes through. Perhaps the piece of wood moves to the side like this and, and the whole profile of what you're working with shifts and you go into the side of your leg. You do have to be quite careful and uh, just put some distance between your inner leg and whatever you're working with. Other methods in which you may want to use your knife is you may want to hammer it into a piece of wood so it's there as a stationary blade to cut string, for example. I see quite a lot of people ramming knives into pieces of wood like this. And if your knife has quite a large finger guard on it, it may be that you can get away with that. But I've also seen, as well, people do the same thing and, and their hands slip down the blade and because they're gripping the knife, they continue to grip on the way down and it slices open their hand. Now, if you're out in the wilderness or you're on the trail and you're quite far from civilization, immobilizing a hand can be a very, very difficult thing to kind of manage in the field because your hand is a, a primary thing, really, a primary tool of your body. It's what you do everything with. And if that's immobilised and you're right-handed and you've just got your left hand, then obviously you're going to have a bit of a hard time. My advice would be to you, 
not to do that, to, to smack your knife into a bit of wood, especially if you've got wet hands or they're oily or slippy. It's just to put it over a piece of wood, hold it against the block and hammer it in with your other hand or another piece of wood. If you don't want to damage a nice piece of wood on your, your knife, use a, your hand, for example, the palm of your hand, and then you can cut some string quite easily. So in this episode, we've really just covered the basics of knife safety. I think health and safety has just been blown way out of proportion in this day and age, mainly because of the breeding of fear. People are having fear instilled in them and um, they take safety to, to ridiculous levels. That's not to say that it isn't a bad thing in some respects with certain stuff, but I think a lot of the time experience is really the way to go. And just not rushing things. If you rush things, you will most likely run into trouble because you're not concentrating correctly on the task at hand and you're fueled by fear, not concentration on what you're doing. A lot of the time, most of the accidents that I've seen, because people are just not concentrating and they just have fear instilled in them and they're, they're working really quickly because they're worried about the rains coming in and they need a shelter up or they're worried about what other people think of them and that they don't look competent enough in what they're doing and they start working really fast and doing something and you know the tip of the finger suddenly disappears and then there's that realisation of I didn't even realise that actually happened because I was working so quickly. So just slowing it down, concentrating and just being aware of what's going on around you, just having some basic spatial awareness is really all you need, coupled with common sense, which hopefully, hopefully comes naturally. So we haven't covered everything in this video, but it's because it's very difficult to cover. Um, as time rolls on in the series, we will perform other tasks and you will get to see how certain knife techniques work and how they can be used properly in the field. And it will all start to come clear, like connecting the dots, for example. So I hope this video has helped out and in next week's episode we're really just going to have a look at maintaining the knife and we're going to start off with inspecting the blade and having a look at it, seeing where it needs attention and then some basic tools that can be taken out with you in the field to help you maintain it. And that doesn't involve sharpening which is something alt different altogether. We're really just going to have a look at maintaining that knife. So thanks again for watching. Please see the links in the description below if you're interested in other videos on the channel or the Bushcraft Basics playlist. And I'll see you very soon in another video. Take care, guys.